Welcome to this week's Hashtag Wednesdays Weekly, a, week, a weekly information session in collaboration with the voluntary sector and our public sector partners. Today's session is all about the, FS, the FASD Awareness Day and our host today is Lauren from Rochdale Connections Trust. Over to you, Lauren. Hello and welcome. Um, thank you for joining me today. Um, as Michelle has just um, alluded, it, it is um, Fetal Alcohol Spectrum Disorder um, International Day tomorrow, um, the 9th of September, and we just kind of felt this would be um, a really beneficial and nicely timed um, session to deliver to, to you today. Um, so I am a youth project coordinator here at Rochdale Connections Trust. I'm also a Rochdale Rochdale Council foster carer and have been fostering for nine years um, and this is kind of a subject that's quite close to my heart um, and, and it, you know I find absolutely fascinating and really interesting and has left me able to um, support quite a few young people and other carers. Um, so I've just got a short presentation today just to give you an overview of what fetal alcohol spectrum disorder is. Um, previously, it was just known as FAS, um, and that's kind of um, developed now um, as more understanding and, and um, knowledge has become apparent. So I'm just going to start sharing my screen and can share this presentation with you today. Um, so there it is, fetal alcohol spectrum disorder, um, known as FASD. Um, this disorder um, consists of four, um, so it's an umbrella term for four different um, conditions. We've got fetal alcohol syndrome, we've got partial fetal alcohol syndrome, we've got alcohol, alcohol related birth defects, and we've got alcohol-related neurodevelopment disorder. Um, so as I was saying, this is a group of conditions um, that can, can occur in a person consuming alcohol during pregnancy. Um, it, it, it can have um, different impacts on different people depending on when they've drank alcohol during the pregnancy, how much alcohol they've drank, um, but problems that can kind of come about as a result of, of alcohol consumption um, include sentinel features, short height, low body weight, small head size, poor coordination, low intelligence, behaviour problems and problems with hearing and sight, or sight. Um, those affected are sadly more likely to have trouble in school, um, can go on for, to have legal problems, they can participate in high risk behaviours and have trouble with alcohol or other drugs, so that's substance misuse. Um, the most severe form of the condition is known as the fetal alcohol syndrome, um, and some only accept FAS as a diagnosis, um, seeing the evidence as inconclusive in respect of other types. So it's sometimes not considered in terms of the neurodevelopment and the alcohol related birth defects. Um, so let me just move my screen on for you. Um, this I've just put in this within our presentation, um, just because if you think of our country size compared to some of our, uh, you know, other um, European countries, um, it is quite surprising that this um, study in 2017 estimated that 41% of pregnant women in the UK have drank alcohol while pregnant with the fourth highest in the world. Um, and if you kind of think of Russia and vodka, <laughs> um, that's actually quite surprising that some of our mums, um, you know, are, are, are drinking in excess to, to um, somewhere like the, the Russian, um, um, you know, if you, Ireland is on there as well, and that's really, you know, obviously I don't need to talk to you about geography, um, but that's quite surprising as well. Their, their highest, um, so their percentage rates are 61%. Um, the message that's really, really prominent and, you know, obvious now um, and part of the dry mester campaign is if you are pregnant or planning to become pregnant, the safest approach is not to drink alcohol at all, to keep the risk to your baby to a minimum. So it's a really, really clear message 
if you're pregnant or going to become pregnant and planning to become pregnant, no alcohol. Um, so there is some statistics here. Surveys from the United States have found about 10% of pregnant women have drunk alcohol in the last month and 20 to 30% drank at some point during their pregnancy. At least 6,000 to 7,000 babies born with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder each year in the UK, and that's just staggering. Um, FAS is the most clinically recognised form of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Um, FASD is the most common non-genetic -gen cause of a learning disability in the UK. So these are really, really staggering statistics and information. Um, the risk of problems depends on the amount of consumed and the frequency of consumption, as well as when during the pregnancy the alcohol was consumed. So, you know, if you're just kind of thinking, I'll have a glass of wine at a wedding, you don't necessarily know that the damage that you're doing to a baby, um, you know, that can all kind of impact depending on where you are in your pregnancy. There are other risk factors, including an older mother, uh, mum smoking and poor diet. Um, so I mentioned the wedding there and you think, you know, how many of us have been toasting the bride and groom? And we've probably, you know, not uncommon for somebody to be at a wedding pregnant. Um, I think when I got married 17 years ago, there was two ladies um, who toasted my husband and I, um, and they were both pregnant about six or seven months along. And you do kind of wonder, did we impact in any way um, by offering that to them? Um, so this shows this diagram now, um, like the alcohol in the uterus, um, that alcohol crosses the placenta and enters the fetus, enters the fetus blood circulation. The alcohol is absorbed by the fetus's tissue um, and then there's a little sign there, signs of alcohol consumption detectable. Um, so I've actually attended the red balloon training um, and they did an experiment at that where they um, broke an egg into a glass of water and they broke an egg into a glass of vodka. And by the end of the day, um, the, the egg that was in the vodka had gone this really horrible murky colour. And it was a visual, really, to show um, the impact of, you know, alcohol on a chicken egg. So if you think of that as a baby, what are we kind of doing um, to, the, to the unborn fetus? Um, so there are symptoms um, and they can include the small head circumference, below average height and weight and facial distinctions, um, such as low set ears. There are more and we are going to come on to them. Um, it can have an impact on brain damage, heart defects, kidney damage, bone formation and limb damage. So, you know, this is um, irreversible, this damage that's taking place um, when a, a mum drinks alcohol during pregnancy. Um, the child or young person um, can end up having learning difficulties, poor impulse control, problems with time, money or maths, problem in social understanding, problems in memory, attention or judgment and problems receiving and processing language. So it is absolutely massive and it ha it's, it's a, a long standing brain damage. Um, the side effects and signs of a young person who um, could potentially have FASD is the poor growth, facial features, neurodevelopment problems, um, and this is all from a history of paternal alcohol usage during pregnancy. There are three FASD facial features. So the first one is the smooth filtrum, which is here between our nose and our upper lip, and it flattens with increased prenatal alcohol exposure. Um, thin lip, upper lips, um, which increase again with um, prenatal alcohol exposure. And I hate this word, <laughs> small palpable features. So that's the eye width decreases with increased prenatal alcohol exposure. Um, and this is the diagram to kind of explain that. So the smooth ridge between the upper lip and the nose, the thin upper lip and the small wide set eyes. Um, so it's, it's, this is actually 
um, only a small, sorry, I'm just going to go back to the side, a small percentage, I think the, the guidance at the moment is around 10% of young people who are impacted by fetal alcohol spectrum disorder have these facial features. Um, and this is often where there's a cross diagnosis um, or a misdiagnosis of a young person. They don't necessarily have to have these facial features to um, to be you know to determine that they've got fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Um, functional impairments um, are deficits, problems, delays, or abnormalities due to prenatal alcohol exposure rather than hereditary causes or postnatal insults. In observable and measurable domains related to daily functioning, often referred to as developmental difficulties. So they may have learning difficulties. Um, they may have motor and sensory processing disorders. Um, they may struggle with the memory, social skills, communication, um, and adapting those skills as well. All those things that kind of typical uh, young people might take for granted, um, you know, it, it can have a real impact on, on young people with FASD. This um, diagram kind of, I think it's really useful this one and um, so this is a typical 18 year old but somebody who has fazed so the the, the high um it says on here at six they may have the comprehension and emotional maturity of a six-year-old at seven they might have the social skills of a seven-year-old at eight they might have the time sorry i've mis i've misread that so they're uh, 18 years old but they're still having the, sorry, comprehension and emotional maturity of a six-year-old. So that's like 12 years younger um, th than they are. Um, they may have the social skills of a seven-year-old. So, you know, that's massive. Um, there's like a gap of 11 years in their, their, their social skills. Um, they may only be able to manage money and time concept of an eight-year-old. So 10 years, they're, you know, bit below their age. Um, the reading ability of a 16 year old, which that's, you know, they're only a little bit delayed there. Um, the living skills of an 11 year old. So they may only have just learned to sort of, I don't know, iron or something like that. And they're 18 and kind of looking at the big bad world. But on the flip of that, they've got the expressive language of a 20 year old. So they may be having a conversation with somebody and, and uh, you know, somebody thinking, well, there can't be anything wrong because they're able to express themselves. They're actually doing that better um, than their age. But actually, um, this is stuff that they've picked up and that they hold on to. Um, but if you think of the emotional maturity of a six year old, they could get themselves into so many risky situations. Um, that it's quite, you know, it's alarming to see that. Um, I'm just going to move my screen along. I don't know why it's not doing the flip today, I'm afraid. <laughs> so there are other associated conditions with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Um, they could have cardiac issues, heart murmur. Um, they might have skeletal problems, joint anomalies. I can't say it, anomalies. Um, they may have renal difficulties um, and problems, you know, around the kidneys um, and all that kind of that goes along with that. Um, occasional abnormalities, um, they've mentioned on there, they may occasionally have a cleft lip um, with or without a cleft palate, webbed neck, short neck, um, spina bifida. So there, there are so many things that can impact a young person who has fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. Um, and I suppose this is where it's really, really difficult for professionals, experts to kind of, um, you know, give them the right diagnosis because it is quite a, it's only kind of just becoming um, talked about and, and known about more and more just recently. Um, so I mentioned um, earlier, um, that the, you know, there are other disorders and that have similar symptoms and how a young person could be potentially misdiagnosed. Um, so we have um, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD, um, autism spectrum disorder. Um, so a young person with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder could be um, misdiagnosed with autism. 
um, reactive attachment disorder, um, sensory dysfunction, bipolar, depression, Asperger's. There's so many um, that have kind of um, overlapping, um, uh, an overlap in terms of, of how young people present with those disorders. So um, there are protective factors, and I suppose from a fostering perspective, for me and my colleagues, um, there is some, um, you know, there's, there's some information here that kind of leaves us believing that what, what we do as carers can potentially help a young person who has been diagnosed or is thought to have fetal alcohol. Um, so eight factors were identified in a study um, and these are the things that can kind of allow a young person to go on, achieve, live a normal life. So they say that living in a stable and nurturing home environment for over 73% of their life can reduce down how they uh, manage. Um, being diagnosed with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder before the age of six, um, which could be difficult because they might not be displaying everything um, that would need to be displayed for them not to get a, a wrong diagnosis. Um, never having experienced violence, which, you know, ideally in an ideal world, no young person would experience that. Working for Rockshell Connections Trust, we're predominantly a domestic abuse charity and we kind of know how many young people within Rochdale Borough are living in a home environment where there is violence or abuse. Um, remaining in each living situation for at least 2.8 years. So, um, you know, there is some young people living in chaotic lifestyles with the parents, losing properties due to debt, moving around, trying to flee partners, um, starting new lives. Um, so, you know, 2.8 years doesn't seem much to a typical person but um sadly some of our young people in the borough that's um you know that's quite frequent i uh, look after a young person who had i think it worked out 14 house moves and he was 14 when he came into care um experiencing a good quality home meeting 10 or more of the defined qualities between the ages of 8 and 12 years old um so again you know we can strive to achieve those things for the young people in our borough, but sadly, it's not always the case. Um, having been found eligible for de developmental disability services, so um, getting the right support in place um, and being eligible for that support. Having the basic needs met for at least 13% of the life. Um, and having a diagnosis of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. So those that list kind of can reduce um, the, the secondary disability rates um, and is so important for a young person. So um, if this may need to be slightly updated. I think there's been some new, um, new data provided. But when I um, delivered this training earlier in the year, this was what was next in Greater Manchester. So to get a fetal alcohol spectrum disorder diagnosis, your GP is always the first step towards getting that. Um, there is now greater awareness of fetal alcohol spectrum disorder upon um, our GPs. Um, and actually, um, the first diagnosis was made in Tameside. Um, I think this was probably at the end of, of last year. The National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, that's NICE, are launching a new fetal alcohol spectrum disorder standard, which um, was delayed because of COVID, but I think it's very close on may have been um, launched now. Dr. Raja Mukherjee's practice in um, Surrey is one of the few places in England where we can get a diagnosis um, for fetal alcohol. Um, local CCGs to continue the work of the trimester awareness across the Great Manchester, which I know is happening and um, there's been a big drive on it, particularly during the month of September. Um, and alcohol screening for pregnant mums is now available across Great Manchester. Um, and I know that, um, you know, midwives and, and maternity services are asking the questions um, much, much sooner now whilst ladies are pregnant. 
Now, there's a little clip here for um, it's it's an adoptive parent whose son um, was um, diagnosed with fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And she just gives a bit of an overview. It's only a short video. I've just how difficult it's been for her and her family living with a young person who has this condition. Um, so I'm just praying that this works. Um, oh no, I don't know why it's doing that. I don't have an account. Have you used if you've used control and click, Lauren? Oh. Can you hear that? Yeah. Come yeah. and spend some time in a house where somebody got fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And then I don't think you've done that anymore. I think it's really difficult that there isn't more awareness about FASD and more acknowledgement of it. There was a study recently that found that it could affect up to 17% of children. So it's, it's a huge, huge issue and yet no one's heard of it, pretty much. It can feel really a, like a lonely place if no one else acknowledges or even knows about it. I just wanted him to be typical, and I was kind of not aware of how he wasn't really. There was quite a lot of lashing out, sometimes at staff and other children. It was just like this kind of volcano sometimes in the room. One of the sort of red flags quite early on as well was when he started to say his first words. He was starting to say about 10 words, maybe, albeit very indistinctly. I remember he just stopped saying those first words. And I remember being really concerned about that. And I would try so hard to get him to say those words again. And he just wouldn't. It was like they'd been wiped. You know, his behaviour was often not typical. And trying to sort of cover over that and, and, you know, pretend everything was normal was starting to get really stressful. So, yeah, we started looking into it. And, and when you first look at, look at it, it's really scary. And you start to understand that your child has got permanent brain damage. That's really distressing. And there's a lot of grief involved in that. He is, in so many ways, an amazing little boy. He's such, such a survivor. He's really loving and affectionate and a beautiful little boy. Once you see the effects, it drives me absolutely insane to see people saying, oh, just, you know, the odd drink's fine. And that's something we really need to get through and get across to people. And once you understand the extent of the damage that it can do and the real consequences for the child and for the family, you just think this is just ridiculous that people don't understand that. So, yeah, I think, um, you know, that, that clip at the end um, definitely puts into perspective just how um, difficult it must be to care for Are a you young paying person. more than £150 Oops, pounds a month on your credit cards, but balances just aren't going down? I don't even know how to turn that Can you that afford off. 30 seconds of your time to investigate? So I think that clip gives, um, you know, some insight into how difficult it must be um for you know a, a, a parent a carer to live with a young person who has fetal alcohol spectrum disorder um you kind kind of dealing with so many um differing opinions differing um diagnoses overlaps of diagnoses um but at the end of the day i think the message is really really clear that we just should not be drinking alcohol during pregnancy and um, the damage that a, a you know one drink can do to a child um is so so significant that it just yeah, it should be written across every billboard in the land um, and just, you know, hopefully some people take something from this and are able to raise that awareness with people they come into con contact with, other professionals, other agencies, other parents, um, just to get that message over. Can I just 